Hey guys, welcome back to OMS TV. Today we're out here in the lovely Komiki and we're actually sitting inside Deep South Distillery. And we're gonna do something a little bit different for you guys. Yeah, and we're kind of answering the age old question. If you're really into photography or want to get into it, you own a pretty decent smartphone. Do you need to look at a entry level DSLR or is it maybe worth it to hang around, save a little bit of your money and get something a little bit higher up? So for this comparison, we are comparing a three-year-old iPhone 10 with Canon's EOS 4000D. So basically, you're looking at kind of a mid-tier cell phone with literally one of the most affordable DSLR packages you can purchase at the moment. And we figured that's a pretty good comparison to be looking at. And what we want to talk about first is just the overall shooting experience when you are transitioning from a cell phone into something a little bit more serious. And I think that is quite important. I mean, if you're really interested in photography and you want to understand it and learn from it, I think shooting with an SLR or mirrorless is going to make you feel and understand photography a lot better. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, obviously your cell phone, it's easy to use. You know, you've got it in your pocket all the time. It's always with you. But at the end of the day, when you take it out and you're holding it up, you know, you're kind of you're pressing one button. There isn't all that much to it. The cell phone kind of takes care of everything for you. Yeah. You don't really need to think too much. Pretty much composition, little bit of consideration to lighting, but everything else is taken care of in-house. Whereas that you actually have to work for. Yeah, and also something that I really like about shooting with these entry-level cameras is if you do upgrade to something a bit more serious, you're already familiar with all the controls and all the menus and all the features about the camera. Yeah, I mean, Canon is actually really good at that. I mean, if you go from something like a 4000D, you can work your way up yep. all the way through your 5Ds, your 1Ds. You can go mirrorless with your M6s. You know, you're stepping up further than that, your R6, your R5, and all the controls and the menu structures are very, very familiar. Yep. And that is a really good incentive to get into a system like this. So now that we've spoken about ergonomics and use of the camera, let's dive into the more important things and image quality. Yeah, let's compare some pictures side by side. So we shot pretty much the exact same subject matter and we tried to get the composition relatively similar between the two devices so that we can really compare them side by side and give you guys a good idea of how they actually perform next to each other. Now, before we look at the images, there is actually one more thing that I'd like to mention. So while we were out shooting with these cameras and phone, obviously we were looking at the screens and we were reviewing the images on the screen. And to be honest, it looked kind of one and done. It really, really seemed like the iPhone had it taken. It was sharper, the images were more crisp, the color rendition was better, it was more vibrant. It really looked like a one-sided battle. Looking at the images on this laptop screen though, uh, it paints a little bit of a different picture. Yeah, especially these entry-level cameras, they do have a very low resolution screen. But like you say, looking at it here, it's a completely different story. Yeah, so let's dive into the first set here. So it's a little landscape that we shot um, with the lighthouse kind of off on the left-hand side, feeding into a little bit of an ocean view, lots of blue sky to look at. And just straight up, what jumps out to you? Yeah, when you definitely look at them just from the bat, it doesn't look too much different. Mm. But just like with any cell phone photo, when you start zooming into it, there is quite a lot of artificial sharpening happening here. Yeah, so you can very clearly see it on the lighthouse itself, that there is definitely some artificial sharpening going on. Also, the light areas in the cell phone footage goes very magenta, and it kind of throws off the whole cast of the image itself. I will give the cell phone credit though, the color rendition looks very good if you just look at it, you know, just yeah. straight up, you're not zooming in, anything like that. And I think it's gonna be a little bit of a theme as we go through this. If you're working straight from device, as in take a picture and you wanna upload it immediately, I do think the iPhone has a little bit of an edge there just because your color rendition is going to be so much more vibrant. Yeah. But at the end of the day, that's nothing that you can't fix with a little bit of levels in the, you know, the image coming from the 4000D. And I think when you compare it to the cell phone and the Canon, 
the Canon will give you a lot more editing capabilities. Yeah. But like you say, if you want something that's Instagram ready or Facebook ready, straight out of the bat, the phone definitely gives you that little bit of extra punch. Yeah, so looking at the image as well, it definitely looks like the image coming from the 4000D has a little bit better dynamic range coming in from it. You definitely see a more subtle graduation between the light areas and the dark areas within the frame itself. And that would lend it to being able to pull more detail from it should you wish to edit going forward. Yeah. Where I think the camera falls down a little bit in this image is when you look at the left hand side of the lighthouse, i.e. the side that's really lit up by the sun. There's quite a pronounced bit of chromatic aberration happening there. So quite a bit of purple fringing coming, yeah. coming through. And unfortunately, that's going to be what you're going to get when you have a relatively cheap lens. I mean, there's no other way to say it. It's the 18 to 55 kit lens. It's what you start with, right? It is, it is yeah. what you start with. But again, it's something that you can fix with editing. So next up, we've got actually two portraits set up for you guys. Mm -hmm. And one was shot in manual mode on the camera and automatic mode on the phone. Mm -hmm. But the next one was shot in a specific portrait mode. And I think that's going to be quite important when we talk about the iPhone. Most definitely. So first, starting off with the one where the iPhone was just in its standard you know, photo mode. And the one thing that immediately jumps to me is the depth that you get within the frame. Definitely. There's a lot of deep focus happening. You don't really get a lot of fall off, even though I was pretty close to the subject matter. You just don't get that same background yeah. separation that you get with the DSLR. Everything is in focus, the background, the foreground. So it's not giving you that kind of portrait feel. Absolutely. While with the DSLR, having a much bigger sensor, bigger glass, you do get that depth of field shot, that sort of pop-out portrait effect that you do want. Yeah, and again, in this shot, the iPhone actually leans to quite a magento cast, yeah. and you can definitely see it in the skin tones here as well, where the DSLR comes through a lot more naturally, definitely yeah. a more natural color profile that you get out of it. But, and I'm gonna pretty much say this with almost every picture that we're gonna look at, the image straight out of the iPhone, if I was just posting to social media, the colors pop a lot more than Definitely. what they do from the DSLR. And now we can jump to the next portrait shot. This was shot in a specific portrait mode on both cameras. So the yeah. DSLR was shot on portrait mode and also the iPhone. Yeah. Now specifically, when you look at the iPhone, the background is completely blurry. It gives you that cool bokeh, like creamy bokeh and I really like it, it really pops out. I also really like it, but at the same time, you can tell that it's quite artificial. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's obviously something that the camera, you know, the phone does internally with processing and it shoots with two different lenses and it stitches them together and it gives you this kind of effect. And that has a massive, massive downside. Straight out, looks beautiful, looks great. You get a little bit of flare going, it's, yeah. it's fantastic. But when you zoom in though, Oof. There is almost no detail left in the image itself. All yeah. of that post-processing that happens in, in the, you know, the processor itself inside the phone just kind of kills the detail completely. And if you look at the hair on Jess here on the DSLR shot, it's just sharp. It just stays sharp. Yeah. On the phone, it definitely becomes very muddy. Even on the image where we shot in the more sort of manual modes, yeah. the detail that you pick up in the hair from the DSLR stays very crisp, while on the iPhone it becomes very, very muddy. And yeah, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a pretty clear advantage there to DSLRs. So next up, we've got the infamous Orms TV flower photo. Now this really tested the 4000D's entry level 18 to 55 lens in macro and I'm going to be honest, it was really difficult to focus close with this guy. Yeah, I mean look, at the end of the day, you know, we knew this was going to be a problem. It's not a macro lens on DSLRs and mirrorless cameras. Yeah. If you want to shoot close up, you need a macro lens, plain and simple. It's a bit more specific. Yeah, I mean it is a more serious tool. And I mean, you know, clear to see from these two images with the iPhone, you can pretty much get as close as you want. You know, yeah. you get pretty decent detail rendition. And just because you are so close to your subject matter, you get a little bit of background fall off. You get, like, get a little bit of bokeh effect yeah. in the background. Again, I am going to give that advantage to the DSLR. 
because even if you are so much further away, you are getting a more pleasing background blur. And when you do crop in, the images remain relatively sharp. Yeah. Where on the iPhone, once you start to crop in, it kind of falls apart completely. But as a straight from device shot in this, that's, iPhone looks decent, right? That's definitely a win for the iPhone on this one. As something that can do a little bit of everything. That's quite good. Yeah, very, very good. Okay, so in the previous shots, we keep mentioning depth of field and the fall off. And yes, there is always going to be an advantage to a camera with a bigger sensor. Very true. But cell phones these days, with their artificial intelligence and in-camera processing that they apply onto images, can actually create something relatively decent. And this is a shot that surprised us. So we figured, let's just shoot it, let's have elements running off into the background, and let's see how much better the DSLR is, because that's what we expected. And it's not quite the case. Yeah, I was actually expecting the iPhone to be quite decent with background blur, and you can kind of see it. It, yeah. is, it is a little bit softer, and it's probably more artificial. Of course, yeah. But when we started zooming into the sort of rusted element here on mm -hmm. the wood, I, I was expecting the DSLR to be way sharper, Yeah. but it's actually pretty similar. Yeah, so what surprised me about this was when we did a similar shot in the portrait mode, the iPhone really fell flat because you could see that it was trying to create an effect and smooth out skin tones and that kind of thing and you lost a lot of detail. But on an inanimate object where maybe it doesn't need to apply as much post-processing, it actually maintained the detail extremely, ex and I mean extremely well. Yeah. I was really, really surprised by the shot. I thought it would be an easy win for the DSLR. So big ups to the phone for this one. Yeah, it's, it's, it's actually very surprising. Okay, so this is gonna be the last one. I think we kept the base for last. This yeah. is gonna be the biggest kryptonite two phones, Absolutely. low light performance. Yeah, and looking at the two images on the face of it, pretty similar. Pretty you know? decent, not yeah. bad at all. Yeah, if you look at it, the iPhone image actually appears relatively <laughs> bright, relatively well detailed, and the same is true for the DSLR, but zoom in even a little bit, like just a tiny bit of zoom on one of these images and the iPhone falls down completely. And you can actually see this in the file size of the image as well. The iPhone file size is very low, the compression on it is not great and it's losing so much detail. Yeah, I mean, so if we crop in to the actual contents of each of the glasses, in the image from the DSLR, you can actually see the sharpness of the little bubbles that were forming, and it maintains phenomenally well. In the iPhone, it goes to absolute, like, just mud. It goes yeah. muddy. The detail falls apart completely. It goes grainy. It's just, it's not really a usable image in any sort of serious capacity. And I think this is where viewers definitely need to be cautioned with cell phones is that it will never compete with a bigger camera or more professional camera in terms of low light. Yeah, and I mean, it's simple physics. The size of the sensor is going to create a certain barrier there that a phone is not easily going to be able to break. In this series, I mean, we've seen how phenomenally well the internal processing power of a phone will simulate the effects that you'll get out of a DSLR and it becomes extremely close in certain scenarios. But when you go down to it, when you're just shooting a lower light image, that's a big, big difference between the two devices. Now, in conclusion to the sort of entry-level DSLR versus smartphone photography, I was actually going into the thinking that the smartphone would probably win a lot of these sort of images, especially when it comes to the ease of use of the smartphone and standard image quality, especially when we started talking about this before reviewing these images, right? Yeah, I 100% agree with you. Um, I came in here and I was thinking, there's no real reason these days to actually go out and purchase an entry level, you know, professional camera, be it a DSLR or a mirrorless. Phones have become so incredibly good. I mean, there's phones out there shooting like 140 megapixel images and it is 
truly, truly phenomenal what these things can do. And when we reviewed the images side by side, like this, device the screens, to device, right? the iPhone had a serious advantage. Yeah. I mean, I was predisposed, I came sit down here and I was like, as a done deal, we don't even need to discuss this. Looking at the images on the actual computer screen though, very, very different story. I think both of our opinions completely changed and I feel definitely that if you're really into photography and you want to understand photography and you want to get the best possible image quality, the DSLR, even though it is an entry-level system, will still give you a much better result. Yeah, I have to 100% agree with you. A cell phone has one advantage and that advantage is it lives right over here and if something happens, boom, let me take that picture. And that is pretty much the only advantage here. That immediacy, that taking the picture, posting it onto social media, sharing it with your friends, that functionality lives within the phone and for that purpose, it is a spectacular device. Truly, truly spectacular. But if you are serious about your photography and you really want to start exploring what cameras and the art of photography is truly capable of, there is pretty much no other option. You go out and you invest in a proper camera system, even if it is the lowest model on the food chain, you are still going to get something that's going to deliver a result that when you actually scrutinize it and you actually deliver a end result in a, not even a professional manner, but just any serious manner, it is still significantly better than what you are gonna get out of a smartphone. I definitely agree with that. So definitely a big win on the DSLR, yep. but obviously some advantage is still on the phone. Absolutely. Well guys, thank you very much for joining us for that comparison between a entry-level DSLR and a sort of mid to upper spec cell phone. Now I want to give a special thank you to Deep South Distillery for allowing us to shoot within their location here. And just as a recommendation, if you are ever in the area, Deep South Spice Island Gin, oh, absolutely magnificent. And like we said, if you really enjoyed the video, remember to like, comment and subscribe and we hope to see you guys soon. Yeah, cheers.